Hello everyone, Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. I'm broadcasting from my uh, office up here at one of the offices at Holy Spirit Ranch in Jasper, Georgia. And hopefully the internet works out of this room, okay? Bear with me. If it doesn't work, we run somewhere else. Thank you for being here. The title of today's message, Demons Are Real. And uh, I pray, Father God, that the truth that you, want re that you want revealed will be heard and understood today to change lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. A shout out to everyone for being here. Thank you. Um, everyone, family, friends, ministry, people to serve in the Holy Spirit Ranch ministry, brothers and sisters in Christ, non-believers. I always say especially non-believers. Hi, Priscilla. Thank you for being here. And as I always say, you know, the Holy Spirit Ranch motto is speak Jesus and love people and never give up. And that's who we are. And we speak Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus and your God brought you to this message, please listen and know that God loves you. And God doesn't love our sins. He loves us. We have our junk. And he provides us a way to be healed of our junk. He does. He loves us. He doesn't want to hurt us. He wants to help us. Today's message, demons are real. Wow. Uh, this could be a 10-part message thing or a five-part message, so it's going to be, what, half hour? Uh, there's so, so much to go with here, you know. First of all, many people go, what are demons? And I asked, I was speaking to my spiritual son today. I was speaking to Jose a little while ago. Talk, I said, I'm going to have a message today. Demons are real. And of course, we hope people to tune in. A lot of times I don't have a scripture in a message because I, I wanted to get out there that when it's on the internet, a non-believer will, will, oh, demons, and they'll look into it and then see the truth. And Jesus took, Jesus Christ took demons and evil spirits very seriously. And I asked my son, I told him I'm going to do a message uh, about demons are real. He says, most Christians don't even believe in them. And the world at large shows demons in media, in music, and in film, and in television programs, sometimes the demons are the good guys, sometimes they're the bad guys, sometimes they're very evil. Even when they're the good guy, they're evil, you know. And, and people have all kinds of uh, misconceptions on what demons and evil spirits are. And there's also a lot of conjecture or discussion on evil spirits versus demons. Well, the scriptures, you know, the Bible where you know, Jesus is speaking, or God's word, and demons, and in the same scripture, demons and evil spirits are, are the same. So we're not going to get into what is it all, is it this or is that. We're going to get into what are demons, evil spirits. And they're real. And like I say, Jesus took them, spirit, uh, took them seriously. Um, and what did he do? And that's going to be the, the crux of this message, is they're real. Jesus talked about them a lot. Well, he, he's, it's in the scripture a lot, and it's in the Gospels. And it's not in John, I don't believe, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, there's many, many scriptures where Jesus is ordering or commanding demons to leave, and they did. He didn't have a speech he didn't go through, hey, Stephanie, thank you for being here. Wow. He didn't have a speech or go through a whole procedure or exorcism. He just ordered them to leave. And he gave us the same authority and the same power. So the first thing here, everyone, is we have to realize that demons are real. And we have to be able to identify them like Jesus did. Now, we're not Jesus, but he identified them. He knew. Sometimes it was obvious uh, my, a demon-possessed person then might have been running naked, or they might have been living in a cemetery, or they might have been in a person like the son, the father that brought his son, 
and he was, the demons were throwing him on the ground. He couldn't talk and he was throwing him into fire and everything. Um, so the demons take many different forms. And in the scriptures, it shows the demons in many forms. And it also shows people being demon possessed. Now, a lot of people say, how could a Christian be demon possessed? And I don't, many of us don't understand how a Christian has the Holy Spirit can be demon possessed, but demons can mess with you. And that's why Jesus talks about in the future of what we should do about demons. It wasn't just for his time there, but he speaks to us about demonic activity. And also, you don't want to be in a place, we don't want to be in a place where everything we talk about is demonic activity. The car breaks down, then a washing machine breaks, and then something else happens, and we go, we're under a spiritual attack. And how many times have we heard that or even said it ourselves? Well, guess what? All your stuff got old, broke down. You know, so we can't be everything is demonic attack uh, or we're blind to it or deny it. We don't want to be in either one of those places. It's part of the life we live, part of the world we live in. It's real. And I could, I'm going to throw some scriptures in here. First uh, John chapter three, eight, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, this is John speaking. The, um, you know, the devil came to steal and to kill and to destroy. And, you know, who are the demons? Where did they come from? Well, when they had the war in heaven and all the angels rebelled, Lucifer rebelled against God, against Jesus. And they were thrown to earth. A third of the angels are the fallen angels. And there's millions and millions, and they're active. And they strategize. The devil strategizes his army of, angel, of, 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 of fallen angels, demons. So it's real, and they're here, to, they're here to do the work of the devil, to steal, kill, and destroy, to steal your joy, to steal your livelihood, to kill, to make, to make you sick, to cause you to walk away from Christ, to cause you not to listen to Christ and go to hell, et cetera, et cetera. So it's part of the war, There's the spiritual warfare that we're in. So to deny the existence of them, you're really going to be in bad shape. You're not going to know how to fight back. So Jesus taught us, identify them so we, so we could pray against them, so we could command them to leave. And Jesus tells us what to do. I'm going to, okay. And in and, First and John... Uh, chapter 3, verse 8, but the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus shows us in many scriptures how he would identify a demon. He didn't just heal the sick, you know. Um, he would often, usually separate the healing of the sick and the casting out of demons. Mary, thank you for being here. So he would often, in the scripture you will see, he would heal the, all the sick and then cast out all the demons. But then sometimes he would cast out the demons and that person would be healed. Okay? Um, Jesus' first miracle actually, recorded in the book of Mark that is, um, I believe Mark chapter one, verse 21 through 28, the first miracle recorded in the book of Mark was the casting out um, of demons. Um, let's go to chapter uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14. Give me a second, I'm sorry. I have kind of a lot of scriptures here. Um, Jesus had just um, healed the Roman officer's um, servant, I believe. Yes. And, and verse 14, when Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. 
Then she got up and prepared a meal for him. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said, he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. He healed all the sick and he cast out all the demons. And let's uh, see if I get some more scriptures. Um, Luke chapter 4, verse 41. Many were possessed by demons, and the demons came out at his command. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 20. Jesus ordered the spirits to leave. So I'm, I, I can't just read each story here and, and each, I'm, I'm getting the point across here that Jesus ordered the spirits to leave. And what we're looking to accomplish here, I believe what God wants to accomplish today, everyone, is that if you're a believer and you're, you're going to a church or your, your studies are not, you're not aware of the battle against the demons in our lives. If you're not aware, that's a dangerous place to be. And it's not to be obsessed with it. It's just part of the world we're in. It's part of the life that we have. Jesus knew all about it, and he prepared us for this. And in Ephesians, we're going to read, he gives us the armor to protect us. So we stand firm against the evil spirits. We've got the power. But if we don't know we have the war going on, that's not a powerful place to be. And if we have misconceptions about what evil spirits are and demons, and we have no understanding of it, it's a little hard to fight your enemy when you, okay, you got the tools, that's cool. You know, you, let's say you got a tank out there and you got machine guns and stuff. Oh, and you, and you, okay, you know how to shoot a machine gun, but you don't know where the enemy is. What do you shoot at, you know? So Jesus, of course, being Jesus, would identify the demons right away. And like I said, we don't want to get caught up in everything's casting out demons or we're ignorant to it at all. We want to just be level-headed about this and let God guide us, let God's word guide us, let the Holy Spirit guide us to what's going on. If you, so that's the point here, is to, for us to be able to fight the demons better. God does the fight for us, of course, and be able to have a better understanding of that they're real. And they, Jesus was very aware of it and made, and, and God made a point of explaining to us what demons are. So it's not to be ignored by the body of Christ. And if you're not a believer, you know, let me tell you, okay, let's go off to the side here a little bit. Actually, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1. Then we'll go off to the side, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. This is Apostle Paul writing a letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. Now, the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow the deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Here's a scripture where spirits and demons, you know. These people are hypocrites and liars and their consciences are dead. You know, Paul's letting Timothy know with the church and he's letting us know that there'll be a lot of false teachings about demons and about doctrine and by demonic spirits. You know, I personally, in speaking this, I don't know if I'm getting this out well or not because there's so much. I personally have had a lot of, a decent amount of experience with this in my own life, okay? Before I was a believer, before I was a Christian, I was searching in my drug infested, immoral life that I was living. And I was searching and looked at some religions, and uh, some of the Indian culture seemed to make sense to me more than others. And I was very close to joining that, and I didn't. 
and I was and I was playing around with wicker for a while, and I was like playing with it. And there is a spirit world out there, and you got God's Holy Spirit, which lives in all believers, which is stronger than any of the spirits and demons that are out there. Period. I didn't know any of that, of course. So I was playing in a spirit world, and just so you know, things would happen. There were, you know, Ouija boards and tarot cards and stuff is real. It's not a game. And when I played with playing, I call it a play because I, I really kind of was in that witchcraft stuff, things would happen. And if you did rituals a certain way, certain things would happen and they happened. So it's not just God's Holy Spirit. It's also all the demons and evil spirits that are at war with us, the body of Christ, at war with God, at war with Jesus, over people's souls. This is a heavy message, I know. But, but we've got the power. But we've got to know that they're real. All you have to do is read every read in the Bible, look up on the internet. Well, I don't know if, okay, on the back of the Bible concordance, just read God's word. God's word. You know, you go to the internet and look up demons, it's like goes all over the board, from the left to the right, up and down. It's like some of it's real and some of it's a bunch of nut stuff. Read God's word and it'll just help you to see how real it is and, and how it's not a problem for us as long as we walk in the power. So, I also, um, you know, I've told a story to some people many years ago when we first started doing uh, ministry on the Indian Reservation in South Dakota, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in, in South Dakota. And this was uh, maybe our second or third trip out there. We had a team of maybe six or seven. And we were going to various locations and praying against the evil spirits because of um, because of many situations and beliefs the the reservation seems it's um, seems to be wide open for spiritual attack it's just amazing and we went to churches and we put oil we was one church wasn't open we didn't get to see the pastor at that time and we heard some stories what was going on it was right near wounded knee site so we put oil on the door and we prayed. And th three of us, the demons, spoke to us. And in different ways. Somebody they spoke to, me, I heard grinding like gravel, like rock going. Ah, ah. This was real. I've got witnesses. So they were rebelling against us praying against them and praying for the health of this church and this body of Christ. So, and I've had other experiences, you know, um, seeing people casting out demons in their life. And it's not something that takes over your ministry or your walk. This is just today's message, okay? But I've seen enough, it's not like I'm the, the big honcho walking in this stuff, but I've seen enough to know how real it is, even in my life. And I know when I'm under attack, demonic attack. Um. Let's go to Ephesians. Oh, actually, uh, in Luke chapter 8, I think 26 to 39, Jesus cast out demons, they said, and they said, do not torment us. Why are you bothering with me, Jesus, son of the most high? And those other scriptures saying essentially the same thing. Where the demons, they recognize, this is a big point, they recognize Jesus for who he is. They know he has the power. It's like, why are you messing with me, Jesus? So, the, think about how, this is scary. Think about it, that these, the army of demons that work for the devil, they know who Jesus is. They know who he is. They know who God is, and they're scared. They know their fate. They know where they're going to end up. Hell was not created for us. Hell was created for the devil and for the demons. And the only, 
only people that are not demonic that are going to go to hell, people that don't believe in Christ, because God just made it like that. He gave us his son for our sins. He died for our sins. And Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. But no one comes to my father except through me. We can't question it. This is how God has it. And people go, why, why, why? Well, you know, why did God make butterflies? Why did God let us live? Why am I breathing right now in this room? Why do I have air? Because God made the air. It didn't just happen. God did everything he did for man. And man kept spitting back at him. And then God gave us his son. And God says, listen, there's one way to be made right with me. It's through my son, Jesus. If not, you will end up where the enemy is. And we'll go, you will go to hell. So, sidetrack. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so isn't it scary, everyone, that much of the body of Christ does not believe in demons, or much of the body of Christ doesn't really know what they are? And then the people that aren't Christians, if they believe in demons, it's what they see on media. Just look at the world, at world leaders and actions that are being taken place and look at the news. And it's pretty, it's not too hard to understand there's a lot of demonic activity in this world. Hello? And what's also scary is that besides, okay, the demons are scared of Jesus. They know who Jesus is, right? But how much of the world, you got these millions and millions and millions of demons out there working for the devil. And how much of the world does not even believe in Jesus? So the enemy still kill and destroy. The enemy's army, Satan's army, they know Jesus. They know who he is. And how much of the world does not believe in Jesus? Now, that's a scary thought. That's a scary fact, actually. Our job is to what? Be ambassadors for Christ and spread the good news of Jesus. God partners with us. He gives us the honor and the responsibility of speaking the love and the power of Jesus Christ. And God's Holy Spirit draws you to him. We're going to go to Ephesians. Chapter 6. Let me find it, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go starting in verse 10. Now, of course, a lot of pastors would have taken Ephesians chapter, you know, right, the scripture here and just did a whole message on it, and it's not how it's working out today. Okay, but we're going to do it, more or less. Apostle Paul speaks to the church in Ephesus, and he's talking about what we're talking about, demonic warfare, spiritual attack. 6, chapter 6, verse 10. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. He, by the way, he's giving us a lot of things to do here. Wearing, you know, God's armor against the enemy, we have a lot to do with it. Be strong in the Lord. It's God's and his mighty power, right? Put on all of God's armor. It doesn't just automatically or autopilot, cruise control, and, and, and attach itself to us. We have to work at this. And this will stand firm against all strategies. The enemy, the devil, and his army, they strat not only do they believe know who Jesus is, they don't believe in him as Lord, but they know who he is and they're scared of him, but they strategize against his people, which is us. So we don't even believe in the enemy, the demons, or we don't know what the heck they really are or what to do about it. As they're strategizing against us, how is that going to work out? We're going to go through a whole lot of garbage that we don't need to go through that we can stand firm against. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits 
in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor. The words, he's very selective in the wording here. Therefore, put on every piece. He's saying, be equipped. Don't be half equipped. Don't be half naked fighting the enemy. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Thank you. For, bless you too, Priscilla. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. How many times are you broken down because you're not standing firm and the enemy's attacking you, you know, whether through the spirits of depression or division in the church, division in your family, whether it's a place even of self-pity of feeling sorry for yourself or a place of ungratitude or, or physical attack emotional attack, and how many, how often do you crash in that situation when you're under that attack? And Apostle Paul, Jesus, God knows all about this, and God tells us what to do, how to stand firm, standing firm. He knows about crashing, falling down. He's talked, the scriptures, how do you stand firm against the enemy? Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. And of course, the armor of God, they're talking about, they're kind of comparing it to the armor from those days, the Roman, you know, you, we, we could do a whole thing. If you look up literally what their armor was like, um, it makes more, the scripture, it illuminates a little more what the scripture is saying. Um, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. The truth that's revealed to us. The truth of God is what holds your, your uniform, your, your armor, your armament together. Putting on, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness that protects us, knowing we are made right with God, knowing his righteousness lives in us, that protects us from the enemy because we're his children now. We're not the enemy. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. The Bible says the people that spread the gospel were blessed for it. And the, 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 the gospel, the peace of the good news of Jesus Christ, of eternal life, of our forgiveness of sins, being made right with God, having the Holy Spirit move into us, that gives us a peace that protects our mind when we're under attack. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. I don't know about you all, but my faith is weak. My shield is halfway down and I get, I get, I get, I get headshots. The shield of faith, it's your, it's, your, it's your faith, your faith. You're believing in the truth. You're believing in the gospel. You're believing that you will stand firm against the enemy. The shield of faith will protect you from the attack. Mm. Put on salvation as your helmet. Salvation as your helmet. You know, in battle... They go for your organs, your heart, head, headshot, right? Murderers, head. You're protected, and you're protected for the spiritual warfare that goes on in your head because that's what so much of it goes on in your head. And, and you're put on the salvation, salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And when Apostle Paul is talking about us having the armor, 
of God to protect us against the spiritual attack and the demons. It's for protection, everyone. The only scripture here, the only one he mentions that's offensive is the sword. That's how we fight back. So everything else here is your helmet of salvation, the, the belt of truth, the gospel, your faith. It's all to protect us, everyone. It's so awesome. And he's saying put on all of your armor. So if you're missing some of it, and the enemy knows when you, your prayer life gets weak or your faith is getting weak or you're too busy to have a relationship with Jesus, he knows. They're strategizing. You know, in warfare, as you know, in warfare, you look for the weakest link. The enemy looks for an opening. When the enemy is strategizing and they see an opening in our life, they attack there. If you keep your armor on, it doesn't mean you got to pray 20 hours a day and, and be a theologian. But you need to spend time with God, time in prayer, a certain amount of time fellowship with Christians. You need to be fed. You need to feed others. You need a relationship with Jesus, a relationship with your Father God. And you need to be a place where the Holy Spirit can operate. Keep all your armor on. Paul saying to a spiritual son, keep all of your armor on all the time. And the only piece of the armor he mentions that we fight with is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When Jesus was in, tempted by the Satan in the wilderness for uh, 40 days, and Satan tried to use the word of God against Jesus. But you know, that's why you have to be very careful about false teachers Sometimes we make, I make mistakes, of course, but false teachers will take God's word and twist a little bit for their purposes. And the devil was doing that with Jesus. And Jesus spoke back and he used the sword of the spirit. He used the truth of the word against the devil. So Apostle Paul is saying, here's the one weapon we have to fight back with. Everything else is we're protected. we got the armor on. But the sword, the sword of the spirit is how you fight back. And how else do you fight back? Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion in the spirit. And we've, we've spoken to that, that God's word speaks about praying in the spirit, spirit and truth. Not just somebody saying, I gotta pray now, but he's praying in the spirit, it's in truth. And sometimes when you pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will take over for you and speak for you according to God's will. We, we, I think I spoke in that a few weeks ago. Powerful. So Apostle Paul, besides wearing the armor at all times, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. We are all connected. The body of Christ, we are all one big, huge family. I'm probably going to end here. Last night, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, 12.30 or 1, God gave me this message. I, didn't, I often don't know what he wants me to speak about. And the Holy Spirit said, demons are real. And I'm like, here we go. And... Uh, at 1.30, I'm not going to get into it now. At 1.30, it's amazing. The attack that my I was under, that my, my home was under at 1.30 until about 2.30. And uh, the devil doesn't want me talking out here on the internet about demons are real. And some of the biggest lies of the devil that he doesn't exist. Hell's not real. Demons aren't real. And that's today's message, everyone. And it's not to be upset. It, we, we could smile about this. It's not to laugh about, but we could smile because if you're a believer of Christ, we all have the same spirit living in us. We all have the same power of God, the mighty power of God living in us. And what did Jesus do? He recognized demons 
and he commanded them or he ordered them to leave. And, you know, and Mark chapter 16, verse 16, verse 11, verse 15, I'm sorry. Book of Mark. And then he told them, that's Jesus. And this is Jesus speaking, okay? Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. He tells us to go. Your neighbor, your family, cross the street. If God sends you across the ocean, across the ocean. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. He didn't just say to preachers or theologians, people specially gifted. He says, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. And the first one Jesus talks about is they will cast out demons in my name. And he also talks about, you know, putting our hands on a sick, they'll be healed. Some other things. But the first thing Jesus says as he tells us to go, preach the good news to the whole world. The first miracle, he says, is to cast out demons in my name. So, this could get so deep. Woo! It's not so complicated, everyone. And not everything's a demonic activity. Not everything goes wrong. Like I say, three things break and everything got as old. I'm being attacked. But I tell you, there's times you really know. And I get surprised. Like before you're going to do something for the Lord. It could be a Bible study. It could be a mission trip. It could be an event. It could be something you're doing. It could be something real special. Sometimes the more special, the worse the attack. And then the attack does come on. It's just like, it's a spiritual attack. And stuff that doesn't break does break that. You know, good stuff breaks. You know, new stuff. It just crazy stuff happens. And then you sit there and you get, oh, gee, I'm under attack. Oh, well, yeah. When you're doing something special for the Lord, you're doing anything for the Lord, serving the Lord, you are a bigger threat than you were before to the enemy. When you become saved, you got a target on your head. Because as soon as you get saved, you're, uh, now you're really a problem for the enemy, for the devil and his army of demons. Just becoming a Christian. But now when you're an active Christian, spreading the gospel, serving the Lord, you're, you're more of a threat to the enemy, so the attack will get greater. It's just is what it is. You're bigger in the kingdom. You're doing more for the Lord. Guess what? God, take that guy out. You're a leader. You're getting something done. God, take you out. So besides a normal demonic activity to discredit us, to make us look bad, to screw us up so non-believers look at us and don't want what we have, besides all that, when you're serving the Lord, there's lots of attack related to trying to get stuff done for the Lord. And like I say, if we do a mystery or something, I'm going... Like, I should know better by now. This shouldn't take, I shouldn't be surprised what's going on now. And you, you laugh at all. You don't, well, you're just like, hey, the heck with this. Get behind me, Satan. That's today's message, everyone. I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if I went too long or not. I, I hope I didn't. Father God, I pray for everyone listening right now that we are, we, that we now really, really are aware that demons are real and and they have power to harm us. They have power to affect our life. They strategize to take us out. They strategize against God's will and against God's plan. But we have much more power than they have. So we need to recognize, Father God, who they are, that they have power, who they work for, and that they strategize against us. We need to know that. And we need to know the simple Simple solution. Keep your armor on at all times. Don't let pieces of the armor fall off. And the simple, simple way of getting rid of demons, when you can identify and you know it's demonic activity, I command you in the name of Jesus to leave. And right now for anyone who's listening, if you've got demonic activity, you know this is just an attack from the devil. 
and you have having self-pity for yourself and feeling not worthy or not successful. I pray against those demons in the name of Jesus and I command you to leave. If you have a physical attack that the enemy is just taking you out with and it's been for a long time and you're weary, you're, you're tired, I pray against those diseases in the name of Jesus and order you to leave in the name of Jesus. If the spirit of confusion in your life is attacking you, I pray against those spirits, those demons in the name of Jesus and command you to leave. If you have a spirit of anger, impatience, affecting your life and your relationships. I command you spirits to leave in the name of Jesus. I order you to leave in the name of Jesus. If the demons of pornography and perversion are attacking you, I pray against those demons and spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. And I order you to leave. You have no power. If the spirits of fear in this world, especially now, are attacking you, I pray now against those spirits, those demons of fear, and command you to leave in the name of Jesus. If you're under attack by the spirits of doubt, I command, in the name of Jesus, the spirits of doubt to leave and don't return. Father God, I thank you for making it so simple for us, giving us such authority to use the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, against our enemies so we can eliminate their power against us. I thank you, Father God, I pray, Father God, anyone who's listening to this message that doesn't know Jesus comes to Christ now and enter your kingdom as your children. And but given the power of your Holy Spirit to live in them, eternal life. I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I was happy to give this message. I hope we didn't get too convoluted. Check us out on www.holyspiritranchministries.org, uh, YouTube, subscribe. We have a lot going on in our ministry now. Even though the world's going pandemic, we're working around that. We're working through that. And uh, check us out on Facebook, of course. It's probably what you're seeing now. And we're going to start something very soon. We've been working on some things, but we're going to start doing some um, blogging, street ministry. Just going to asking people questions and... Uh, trying uh, delivering the truth and the power of God to people. So we'll let you know how that goes. We'll, let, we'll keep you informed, okay? God bless you. Thank you for being here so much. Um, it means so much to me. And uh, thank you for being here. God bless you. Bye.